Hello, everybody. I will take it in Danish uh, or in English because that might be a little bit easier for all of you to understand. I work from GiniBuild. We just merged with uh, the Brussels company uh, Let's Build because we could see the connection between different systems will make everything much easier. And what everybody is speaking on today is about, okay, how do we get the data? How do we get this kind of transparency between the systems with a single source of truth? I'm responsible for all our Nordic activities, uh, and, a, and a big applause for the Norwegian market. You guys are far ahead of the rest of the world in a lot of th things in BIM and so on. Our mission in Let's Build is, of course, to connect all the different tools that we use on site and use in the planning phase, so we have single source of truth. And we know we cannot build everything. Nobody can, not even Autodesk, Tremble, and so on. They keep on buying all kind of new stuff because they can see the more we own of the value chain, the better it will be for everybody in the end. But I will always say, choose the tools that you can see the best use of instead of only taking one provider for everything. Because look at your smartphone, for example. I have an iPhone. I think like 2% of the apps I'm using is from Apple. The rest is, is whatever I need kind of apps, third party, and I, I engage in those instead of just cho choosing one. But I want the platforms to, to interact with each other. I fly with Norwegian when I come here. So I download my boarding pass, take it to my Apple wallet. We have two different systems that talk to each other so I have single source of truth. So why are we all in this game and want, why do we want to digitalize what we do today? McKinsey came up with a report in October 2017 saying we could build 45% cheaper. That is without connecting the different tools, but just using the tools we are doing today and actually implement them in a good way. Because what I see every time I go on site for all the different companies I work for is we tend to see like, oh, we buy this magical tool and everything is solved. But that is not what it's about. It's about 10% of the software, 90% of the change management part and understanding that in order to change, we need to behave differently than we do today. And one of the main reasons why I see we always are failing is from a personal level, if I need to change behavior, I will always look and say, okay, what's in it for me? Can I see the value of change? Then I will do it. And a lot of the tools we're using today might only occur to help somebody on site or in the planning phase, but we need to get the bigger picture and start using the data and say, okay, if you can do this, you can up your efficiency with X amount of percentage because we have the data to actually show this kind of information. Our industry is broken. It is completely broken. We are not using the tools in the way they should do. So we have budget overruns, efficiency, uh, plumbing. We have rework for a massive amount of number. I know here in Norway, you guys are using quite a lot of time and, and, and spend quite a lot of money to making sure we have a greener footprint than what we had a year ago. But if you just look at the rework, 7 to 15%, that is in general in industry. How many times do we play something and we have to redo all the work and order new materials and so on? That is the easiest way actually to be more efficient. But just taking all the deliveries on site, if we plan them in the right way so we don't have materials being lost at site, then we can save there. We start by looking at, at the buildings we are having and just choosing the different components. Ah, we should use this component instead of this. Yeah, that is one way to save. But our efficiency, 30% for work on site, that is a massive amount of CO2 going in because people drive on and off for the project. To save 1% each day for a person, you should save less than five minutes. That's what it takes. It's, it's 1%. If we just take the site meetings, we occasionally meet once a week and we use the first 30 to an hour, 30 minutes to an hour, just spending on, okay, what is the actual status on the project? We might be 10 people in the meeting room uh, for that one. That is a massive waste. Why not use everything you have today? We have the tools in the industry to actually work in real time and be dependent on the data that we are having, but our industry is so afraid of transparency and actually giving each other the trust we have so much mistrust in our industry, and we need to change that in order to actually working better than we do today. We don't share knowledge. We have 
tons of data in the industry. I think we are the industry that actually accumulate most data. But 95% of all data that we are harvesting is being thrown away, put in a basement, and never looked at again. BIM, of course, will make this one a lot easier when we start using the object as, as looking at what we're doing as repetitive. If we look at the general contractors in the UK, the top 10 one, I wouldn't choose the, the Nordic markets, but, but from the UK, top 10 is earning less than 0.1%. If you look at the house builder side of it, they're earning plus 20%. I don't say you can use everything just like a house builder, but if you look at the processes that we're doing from project to project, how many ways can you actually pour in concrete? How many ways can you put up acoustic um, ceilings and so on? If you look at the process and start learning from that and say, okay, it's the same process we're using every time we have this kind of object, then we have a data set that we can actually learn from, from project to project. We need to look at the industry like it's a marriage. How can we flourish and survive in a marriage if you're not transparent, honest, and give crucial information the moment we have them? I've seen tons of projects, of course not in Norway, but in Denmark, where we had a contractor that was falling way behind on the schedule. They waited three months until they told the client that they had a conflict here. Why not give the information at the moment you have it, then you can solve it out in the best way. Now you just had a pissed client saying, why didn't you tell us? And in the end, it's, it ended up costing everyone a tons of money. I know a lot of the way we're working is broken due to the way we have tenders, the way to we actually do something before we actually finished it up. And we end up having this. The small one, that is the original contract, and the big one, that is the change orders. Because everyone knows that in a tender, you need to be kind of the cheapest one. That is one aspect of it. I know the new tendering system makes it a little bit better. But in the end, it's about if you have a project that is solid from the start, you will have the right price, and you will not have all these conflicts on site afterwards. I've talked with tons of people in the industry. And everybody says, yeah, you cannot, you cannot compare it with manufacturing. Because it's unique location, different people, different setups we're having, different things we're building. There's an industry that does exactly the same, that is way, way better than we are. Cruise ships. When they renovate a cruise ship, they use the original parts of it, and then they redo a whole cruise ship within a couple of months. We're talking 250 new rooms on that one. Because they take the plan, keep on reiterating until they have the perfect one. I saw a video on LinkedIn last night that was actually comparing the, the construction industry. You saw a lorry driving, and the tower where the, the person in front of it was sitting was up, because two people were working on the engine while driving. That is how we work here. The learning part, I call it the Excel syndrome. I've seen tons of ways of solving the same thing, but in tons of different ways. So that would say we don't have in any way a de clear data set that we can actually start learning from. We need to learn the value of data and look at it as it was gold. To get a clear example of, of the Excel syndrome part of it saying we have a lot of manual things we keep on updating, I think everybody knows the scheduling part of projects. The first one, uh, let me see if I can point here. This one is, th is the client's advisors and the main contractor's main schedule. The next one is the contractor's own main schedule. The third one is showing the three to six weeks planning because that is not included in this one because we plan when we go on site. And the next one is for the subcontracts, a little bit more tight than the, our own three to six weeks planning. All of these need to be updated because nothing is linked between those. So the information we rely on all the time is always outdated. And we need to solve this problem because it means tons of people on site waste tons of time because they don't have crucial information when they need it. And how can you steer a risk on a project if you don't know where you are? So I tend to say we're driving a death spiral uh, in the way we work today. Uh, in, in Denmark, we have something called building supply list shown, where we have an update called uh, the weekly bankruptcies. How sad is it to have an industry where you have a whole section just telling about how many companies actually 
went bankrupt. And a week after they open in a new name and doing the same shit all over again. Because we don't learn from what we do in the way we should do it. So, so my question to all of you is, okay, should we go for always the money and, and that should be the driver of change? Or should it be trust? So we actually can earn what we should do, all of us, from client, advisors, contractors, subbies, and so on. Because everybody actually wants that everyone should earn money. But the way we work, nobody is. Maybe the client, uh, if the, we talk commercial building. So I believe that all of you uh, remember the Lehman Brothers in 2018 that led to the, this big recession globally. That was all led by mistrust in the bank, banking system. So everyone was trying to clean and pull out the assets in order to save what they could save. It's the same way we work in construction. We have so much mistrust. If you look at the efficiency rates, they keep on falling down, even though we have better tools, more skilled workers. But what we don't have is the data to actually learn from. So we do the same mistakes all over again. We have customers in Panama, Australia, Denmark, Sweden, Norway, UK, US. It's the same problem we are having globally. It's not like yeah, we are a little bit better than Panama if we talk efficiency and, and quality. But it's the same kind of problem because it's not about the tools. It's about how we communicate and the completion of the projects before we go on site. And that needs to change. So if we look at the industry ages, some would say, yeah, this is where we should be. But in many ways, this is where we are because we don't have a learning. It's the same way. I know we have robotic now for laying bricks and so on. I'll have the option to do it. But in most projects, we do it like we did like 50 years ago. And that needs to change. And our industry will be disrupted. If we don't want to do it, somebody else from the outside will. Amazon, Google, and the rest of the big guys have started to invest a lot in our industry. Because they can see it's a shit load of money that can be earned if you do it in the right way. If you haven't started collecting your data in a structured way, you should start. Because those guys have driving the business from day one on the data side. If you take Amazon in 1998, they could tell exactly which book you would have because you have bought this amount of books. We're talking 20 years ago. We cannot even tell how, how much time it takes to put up these ceilings from real data. And our industry has such a big impact. Just look around our daily work. We live in houses or apartments. We travel on roads, through tunnels. We are in office spaces like this one. So everything kind of surround us in our daily life have some kind of connection to our industry. So the impact globally, if we change and do something a lot better than what we do today, will be really good for everyone. Change will come whether we want it or not. It's just about do we want to drive it in the industry we're in today, or do we want somebody from the outside to go in and disrupt it? Because they can if they want to. And they're already starting to building up the firepower to change the industry. But we still have a competitive advantage because we have knowledge workers. But what we want in the end is actually to have that knowledge into the company, so it's the company knowledge. And then when we have a lot of project managers changing job, I would, I would expect it to be the same here. And they keep on being higher priced than ever because the good ones is worth it. But what if you can take the cheaper ones and actually give the knowledge that the good ones have to that person so you can improve, I will call it the hero syndrome. We have a lot of people in the industry saying, oh yeah, we have a pro project, it's gone completely cyber. Oh, just take this project manager, he can solve it. Why should we solve it in the first place? Because we had the knowledge where it should go wrong. So let me tell you a little bit of how we do in it, let's build. Uh, I'll just take the scheduling part uh, as an example because you've already seen that. We take the, take the scheduling from an existing planning tool because we are not a planning tool. We are a communication and collaboration tool. You pour it into GiniBelt and now you have all your resources. You allocate the task directly to the person doing it. If that is the site manager, foreman, or actually the worker on site. He uses smartphones, everyone have one today, so we have the technology on our side in our age. Two clicks, 
they give the progress report, everyone is aligned on where are we in the project. You can, of course, put in approval uh, workflows and so on. So now you have one single source of truth where everybody knows this is where we are at the project right now. This is where we have problems. This is where we delayed. This is how we communicate. We have a lot of communication as of today is going in and out on email. And to be sure, we, we tend to put each other CC just to be sure that everyone knows. So that will end up having a massive workload just on an email because we just wanted to be sure you had the information. But if you have one place to actually have it, and you can search it like Google. Okay, if I want to know something about this project in this phase on this task, I can just go to it and I can find the information because I have it one place. All these data from the projects, all the portfolio goes into one big data warehouse where I can start sorting out, build it up. We can have the data warehouse for you, or you can have your own and say, okay, this is where I have it. And we can start helping you build up the BI module so you can start learning from it, saying, okay, I can see on the 10 projects that I have currently, the most problem I'm having is due to the carpenters. It's always the painters that is delayed, not necessarily their fault. But what is the relation? Why are they always late? Where in the process is things starting to get sideways? And that is the learning we want to have because data speaks for itself. That is now how should we improve? This is the most critical part of how we're working. And I, I wouldn't, haven't put it, pulled the number for it, but I would tend to say like 98% of the problems we're having is due to the completion of the project before we go on site is not fulfilled. In the end, we're all working for the same. If you talk Autodesk, Tremble, RB, whatever, everybody wanted to build the connected construction because in the end, that is the best way to solve the problems that we're having. So we don't have all these manual workflows to change all these uh, information we're having going on. Change will happen. These are my kids. They don't talk about, they don't even know the word digitalization. They don't even talk about the device they are using. They just ask me, in, in this case, saying, I want to see something Muppet Show, and I want to see it on the small screen. If it's television or mobile or a tablet in this case, they don't care. They just want the problem fixed. They don't care about how we do it. It should just be easy. And if it's not easy, my generation is kind of lazy. We, we, we ask a lot of questions. That generation, they would say, are you guys stupid? Why do you do it like this? You can do it like that. So we have the time on our side. The change will come, and hopefully sooner than later. That was what I had. Thank you.